Hi, Forex Fortune Hunters. Tom Wilmot speaking. Let's take a quick peek now that we have finished two templates. We've done our double whammy template with the Trend Magic indicator combined and paired with the chandelier. And we've done our Super Gimma template. Gimma standing for Guppy Multiple Moving Averages. And we've added to both of those our Zlander signal line. Now that we've done that, let's do some comparisons and let's take a look at the hot action in the, in the New Zealand dollar this week. Hold on to your hats. Let's get started. Okay, so you can check your own charts. We're recording this on, uh, let's see, Thursday. Uh, in the middle of April, in the beginning of April, sorry, the 4th of April. And uh, we began with April Fool's Day on Monday. And you see on the chart right in front of us that we're taking a look at the New Zealand dollar versus the U.S. dollar. This happens to be a 30-minute chart, so we pulled away from it just so we can check some of the basic trends. And the two lines right here represent, of course, Sunday evening, the beginning of the new week, where we gapped up a little bit, pulled back to the bands, and then went higher. Now, the New Zealand dollar isn't the biggest mover around usually, but this week it created a couple or three 25 to 30 pip moves, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're beginning and you're trying your best to avoid the very volatile pairs, especially since Brexit has taken over all the pound pairs. You want to be a little careful of that and the uh, and the rumors and the votes in Parliament and so forth. So this is a pretty straightforward, typical kind of price action on the New Zealand dollar. And let's just see what happened. Well, we came into Monday. We had a little bit of a move higher. Then we kind of chopped around during the day on this 30-minute chart before we ended up coming down here through the Ichimoku cloud and broke our chandelier to the base side, which was here, and then had a move here, a pullback into the bands late on Monday in the U.S. session before some kind of a cataclysmic event here, which you can see. Now, what I wanted to tell you about uh, in this particular video also was we haven't checked in on our friend Forex Factory recently. Let's just do some double checking here for the new people on board. And uh, thanks for all of those new subscriptions, uh, by the way. If you come to Forex Factory and you go to the calendar section, many times we've been over to forums to download indicators and so forth or to check on other people's strategies, but this calendar section is the basic one. And what we're going to do now is filter this so we can get rid of a little bit of stuff. We're going to try to get what, what I do first is click on None, and then let's come back and let's just see what the uh, uh, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar had on on uh, tap for this particular week. So we'll apply our filter, and you can see that everything has been blanked out except these two uh, currency pairs. Now, specifically, of course, it's possible that some announcement in the U.S. dollar would also impact this. But for the time being, let's just look at New Zealand. And we'll find out that uh, late on Monday, 5 o'clock Boston, New York time, so it's late in our trading day, and that's what our chart represents, the New Zealand uh, dollar had a business confidence uh, report. It was only an orange grade, but it was minus 29 as opposed to minus 17. Whether that had anything to do with the mass shootings or not, who knows what it is. But the New Zealand dollar uh, really had kind of a rip down downward. Uh, notice also that we have here the odds and so forth, so you can check. And you want to check every time you sit down at your PC, just to make sure you didn't screw up. The RBA rate statement was back on Monday evening as well, way late at 11.30 if you're trading in the East Coast. Um, and it, perhaps it would be easier for you for out in, our friends in California. But no matter, that was another one that uh, added some juice to the, uh, to the price movement. But anyway, we're focused on New Zealand dollar. So now we come back to our chart. Now let's double check our times. We have this candle right here. And if you look down in the bottom section, right down at the bottom, under uh, to the right of where it says default, you can see that uh, this was... 401 April Fool's Day 2019 
and it was at 2100 hours. Now if you subtract 4, which is what our server is ahead of us on in, in England, uh, uh, and um, the 4 hours doesn't reflect daylight saving time, it's it's way it is year round, they don't worry about daylight saving time on the, on the server. 21 minus 4 is 1700, and sure enough, that's our 5 o'clock hour. <clears throat> so we had a dramatic drop right here. Then we pulled back. Here we are right up against our trend magic. We did have a kind of uh, juicy move here, but we ended up closing downward, and I kind of drew a horizontal line on this one. The trade actually would be entered back up here. Double click on this to move the line higher. And so bottom line here, your risk reward in this particular trade is uh, reasonably minimal. Uh, you've got five pips here to this uh, trend magic, and you've got 12 pips all the way back to the chandelier. You could pull into the bands, but notice that even this one quick move higher and then a rejection uh, didn't reach the chandelier. So that's the deal there. So that was our first move on the bad news about consumer confidence or business confidence, and that ended up overnight and into Tuesday being a 48 pip move which is pretty good for the for the New Zealand dollar so nothing like uh, that to get your week started off in really good order <clears throat> now let's take uh, let's go into our uh, uh, indicators by right clicking on the chart actually we're going to uh, I'm going to take off the Ichimoku uh, cloud for the time being and let me tell you why. Sometimes that's that's a real fail-safe indicator, but as you can see from our move here with our indicators, this move to the north, uh, the buy zone was created once we had our two white lines. Basically, the situation is sometimes that itchy Mugo cloud can, can make you too cautious. You don't want to get into the trade when you should. And so uh, before we go on with this second one and we move ahead, let's just compare this now to our Super Gimma now that we have this uh, the way we'd like it. Okay, so we're going to come here. We're going to go down to our Super Gimma 3, and we're going to add that in. And you can see here, this is exactly what we were th talking about. Here we had the trade, and we would have actually entered it on this 30-minute chart a little earlier than after this particular pullback, which was on the Tread Magic Chandelier. Look at our arrow here. Now, we could take a trade in this area once we're below our Zlander signal line, but notice still, this pullback towards the bands is also a helpful indicator. And this never gets past our 50 EMA fail-safe line. So that's how that particular trade compared. Now let's go on and let's come back to our uh, 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 double whammy. We'll put this in place here. Now we've got it in place. We're going to take off. Uh, actually, I'm going to change that. I have one uh, template that I saved with the Ichimoku cloud, and let's just see which one I did. Double whammy signal line. So that should clean that out, and that made it a little bigger too, so let's move it down. So there was our first trade. Now, coming over here, <clears throat> notice that with our signal line, we did have this. Now, would you could you have taken on a 30-minute chart a trade? See this white candle right here? This is probably the reason I had this expanded. Notice this white candle right here. That was the pullback after we changed from chandelier. We took out the chandelier and so forth. So we could, in fact, if we wanted to check this out even further, we put our yellow line here. Let's drop down to our 15-minute chart, and let's just see what happens. Now, notice that we're going to get in this trade a little earlier to the upside, given our trend magic. A pullback here, and then this move higher. And so then you're in the trade here, right here, up into the uh, London opening of the London session is 12 pips on beyond that, all the way up to, as I mentioned, 27 pips, another nice move to the north to reverse that trend that we saw on Monday. Uh, now we're going to compare. Once again, let's check out our 15-minute uh, Super Gimma. Let's try three. I don't recall which one it was. And in fact, here we go. We had this particular move here. We had that candle, that same candle we just were looking at. We had this particular pullback, and then we move higher. So we have 
This is our signal here too as we moved into the London session. Unless you come down to the five minute chart, let's put our line on here, you're not going to get that complete pullback into the bands. This is pretty quick moving, so let's just test it. Yes, here we go. On the five minute chart, we have our up, we have this move higher, then we have this, what I called in the book, uh, Zlander flytrap uh, forex trading system. We have this, what I call dancing on the ceiling. See the just bump, 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 bump right along here, consolidating, building energy for the drive higher. So sometimes there's nothing wrong if your longer term uh, uh, arrows are pointing in the direction. If you have a buy zone in the 30 minute and the 15 minute, there's nothing wrong with dropping down to the five and getting a more precise entry. Okay, so that compares our chandelier uh, double whammy, uh, this one here, with our super gamma, just to see what happens. Notice we pull back our signal line is here. We have this same dancing on the ceiling that we saw before and the move higher uh, on the super gamma chart as well. Look at how it continued all the way into the uh, uh, session, London session on that night. And if you were to follow the progress, look what happened over here. This is the Wednesday where we had the reversal back down again. Actually, coming into Thursday, we had the reversal back down. So we had at least four great trades on the New Zealand dollar this week. And I wanted to show you in this video how we really had a, a confluence. We're not seeing a complete difference of opinion on the two templates we built. We really are seeing just a, dish, a, a different visual image of how the trades are shaping up. Sometimes you'll want to use this trend magic to get your test and to see about uh, where, the, where the support is holding. Other times you'll want to use super gimmick to see about that pull back into the bands. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please like these videos and subscribe to our channel if this is helping you. And leave a comment if you'd like us to add another pair or uh, add additional analysis. And please be sure also to check out fxfortunehunter.com so that you can see how these templates are put together from scratch. Thanks for watching. See you next time.